In this Affinity Photo tutorial, how to add a quick mask to an image, and also how to use it to create all kinds of textures, such as this effect here. So this is for PC and Mac. First thing to do, go to the Layers panel, select the layer you want to use, this one, and then go to Layer, and then down here to New Mask Layer. As soon as you do that, you'll get a mask layer, and you can use it to remove parts of the image. So just go over here and I'm using a brush stroke. Just see here, I've got the brush selected and I'm applying a brush, one of the spray brushes. You can select all kinds of different brushes to create this effect. And now you'll see the original underlying image. Now this of course could be another layer below. In this case, it's just transparency background. So let's just undo that. So what you can do to actually create some interesting effects and textures, you can go over here and with the background selected here, and the mask also will be duplicated as well in this case. With this selected, just right click and then just go to duplicate. And straight away you'll notice you get that. So you get both, you get the mask as well. Now what you can do, you can now add an effect, which is a brush stroke or maybe an effect, an actual filter effect. So let's just apply it. And I'm using black here. There's a reason for that. I'm using black for removing parts of the layer. So just apply it. And you can see now if I apply it to this, it's applied to the background. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is apply it to the mask. So make certain you've got the mask selected and then apply. Now in this case, you can't see anything. I haven't added any layer effects to give any depth or anything. So just go back again to the background. And with this background selected, you just go to effects. Just click here. And now with this, you can go here and go, oh, let's go for Bevan and Boss. Bevan and Boss is a really good one. 3D is another one as well. You can select that. Now, personally, I think Bevan and Boss probably works best in this case, maybe in Boss. And you can vary it, of course, in numerous ways. Change the radius and close. And you get this effect. And now what you can do, again, go back to the mask and apply it again and again and again to create maybe like say a bottled effect. You want a Lovecraftian sort of horrible texture added to a book or something. I think this looks pretty effective. And of course you can vary the effects in countless ways. So just go back here, click there. And now instead of that one, you can always click profiles and just change the profile. And you can see you can create a variety of different designs. If you don't want that, just click remove profile and then just change radius. Also change direction. You can modify this and you can see, just change it to create different kinds of effects like that and close. Well, how to create the actual brush? Well, all I'm doing is this one. Just short there, oils. You could use sprays, all kinds of different brushes. Make your own brushes. I've got lots of videos on how to make brushes, but just use this one. And if you want to spread it out instead of just applying it sort of very locally, double click this and you can edit it. And I always generally with these ones, if I want to apply an effect over the entire image, I always just go for here, dynamics. So you go in dynamics and you can just push the scatter up. Now this brush is slightly different because it's made up of different things. So there's also another option here, sub brushes, which you can double click and you can modify the spacing and dynamics for that as well. So it's a slightly more complex brush, but many of the brushes will just have that initial, just this dynamics, just to modify here and close. So you can create this sort of weird sort of texture, leave certain parts of it nice and clean. This is it's aged, the book is aged. However, what if you want to apply additional effects? What if you want to remove parts of it? Well, another quick way of doing that, you just go over here and set it to white and Again, don't apply it to the actual, don't apply it to the actual top. I always do that. Need to do it to the mask. Key thing, mask. If you suddenly see the brush strokes, you're doing it in the wrong place. What you want to do is apply it here. And then you can see as you do this, it will clear some of it away. Obviously, some brushes are better than others. You might want to use a just a soft round just to remove some. Okay, so you've got this. Well, what you can also do Maybe you want to apply additional texture effects on top of the effects itself. Well, you can, but I think more effectively is just go to layer and then you can go to merge visible. 
and that will merge it all into one pixel layer. You've still got the others. You can always delete them. Just select them and delete them. This, they are still there, so you could bring them back for future use. So you've got this pixel layer, and it's just this image. There's no effect. You can see there's no live layer effect there at all. So exactly the same as before, with it selected, go to Layer and down to this New Master Layer. Select that. And now exactly the same you can do, duplicate it. So with this one, just go here, Layer and Duplicate. So you've got two. And now this one makes certain this is selected. You can click here, Effects. Just go and quickly add Bevel and Boss again. Now you won't see it initially, so I'm just sort of guessing, I'm just applying. This is not modifying this in any particular way. You can't see it. So close. And now let's just go to the mask itself. So this is the mask selected now. Make certain you again go back to black or maybe a gray, light gray, darker gray. It's all grays. So you can always modify it slightly by just doing this and just, just changing that. I'm just using black because it really gives more dramatic effect in this case. But now, I can apply again. And you can see now I can apply it on top of that original. And this would be hard to do if you were just doing it with the basic masking, the initial point. But now you've got the original image plus a new mask on top of that. And you can create all kinds of effects. And again, click here, effects, you might have not got the right approach. So click there and now you can then modify this, change the direction. You can see then you can tweak this, change the soften, pillow, maybe go for emboss, and so on to create different designs. Maybe change profile, something like that. Maybe a sort of moldy effect, if in this case, and close. And again, you can continue. Again, make certain you select the master layer. If you don't, you'll see the brush stroke. And you can see then you can just add some. Now, if you were using the original mask, you wouldn't be able to do this. Certain areas would just not be accessible. So here you can see it's on top of that original mask effect, which I think is quite nice. Gives it a bit more texture, unusual design. And of course you could repeat this again, simply just go to layer and merge visible and repeat it. Use different brush strokes and a different mask, different profiles, different layer effects to create a very, very unusual effect. You could apply this on skin to create some really roughening of skin. All kinds of different designs can be used with this effect. Maybe some text as well would be pretty cool. Maybe use text as a brush stroke to create even more interesting designs. So that's Infinity Photo. Obviously you can do it in other applications as well. Many applications use masks. I think masks are a very powerful feature for creating all kinds of brush effects. Please put in the comments below if you like this effect, if you've got any ideas about other things you would love to see using masks, any things you don't know about masks, please let me know in the comments below. Always like adding additional videos about subjects such as the masking in Affinity Photo. Like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.